from the Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. This is TarHeelIllustrated.com. I'm Jacob Turner. He's Andrew Jones as I wave at him across the way right there. He's Hey, he's Jacob, sitting, how you doing? Sitting right across midcourt uh, on press row. Not press row over there, but uh, on the front yeah, row. Yeah, this is, this is, the, this is the, the scores Is it technically table. press row? Scores table. It That's is. It is. For. The, the press row that we have to hang out on is way up there. As, yeah, as you were so privileged to sit next to me tonight. <laughs> as I offered yeah, you all that wisdom during the course of the game. Hey, always, you know, you know, just full of wisdom, AJ, as you as you always are. But I mean, uh, we witnessed a, a heck of a game, at least from a Carolina perspective. Carolina coming out ninety three to eighty four winners over the Duke Blue Devils on this court right here. And AJ, real quickly, I'm going to run through some stats, and then we'll dive into this thing. Armando Baycott led the way. We're going to talk about him very shortly. Twenty five points, ten boards, five assists. First players is per Steve Kirshner. So shout out to him for that. First player to post twenty five, ten, and five against Duke. Uh, since Charlie Scott in 1970, only two players all time in Carolina history have done that. So uh, again, joining not some elite company, company in that respect. Yeah, not bad at all. Harrison Ingram, 21 points, 13 boards. Don't worry, we'll talk about him a little bit later as well. R.J. Davis, 17 points, five assists. Seth Trimble, 10 points. Cormac Ryan, nine points. Carolina um, improves to 18 and four, 10 and one in ACC play. And I think most importantly for Carolina fans, not only did they beat Duke, but they, they, they have a two-and-a-half game lead over the Blue Devils after tonight in ACC play. So just an all-around good day if you're a North Carolina basketball fan. But let's start with Armando Baycott, AJ. We talked to the players after the game, talked to Hubert after the game. They said the number one emphasis coming into it was getting Armando Baycott involved early and dominant early. And, man, was he good. Like I just said, 25 points, 10 boards, another double-double for him, threw in five assists as well. He Him and Ingram in particular, we're going to talk about Harrison Ingram here in a second, I thought were absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal, excuse me, tonight. We'll talk a little bit more later on about maybe yeah. why the guys had a little bit more opportunities than they've had in the past and kind of had to step up in this situation. But, yeah. man, was Armando well, just – he was big time today, man. He was big time. Well, it was a point of emphasis. He had a conversation with Hubert after the Georgia Tech game, and it was about getting him more involved. And I don't think the conversation was so much critical of Armando or like, hey, you need to step it up. Like a lot of people have been saying, and I've had some interesting interactions with people on Twitter and on our boards. And I've, I've kind of pumped the brakes on a little bit the last few days because too many people just look straight at the box score. They look at the point column. They think, well, what the heck is wrong with Armando? I'm telling you guys, and, and, I, and I know this because I talk to people who are who kind of know a thing or two about a thing or two, and Armando has been playing fantastic basketball. He didn't play that well at Florida State, but his floor game has been really really good it's been nba level for a guy that can do some of the things that he can do this year he has played himself as much into much being much more of an nba prospect this season than previously the one thing that hadn't been there the last few games has been the scoring and part of it is because rj scoring a ton he's taking a lot of shots the shots are coming elsewhere teams are still doubling him they're not giving him a lot of opportunities and to be honest part of the conversation with hubert was that guys weren't giving the ball look a big man cannot throw himself an entry pass that's one of the there's a few things in sports that are absolutes that cannot happen one of them is a big man in basketball cannot give himself an entry pass tonight it was a there was a concerted effort to give him the entry pass get him the ball duke does not defend the the rim very well there Derek lively ain't walking through that door and also to get him to body filipowski and he did over and over he had a fantastic game he showed everybody the spin moves i've talked about and the drop steps that are there he's got that two dribble move where he can create something off of it in the lane that, that wasn't there before his leaner body allows him to set a screen and get down and post and get better position he drew a foul on Filipowski in the second half where it was textbook where he sealed Filipowski and then he kind of got his backside into him, forcing the uh, Filipowski to foul on the entry. And, and he did. And Armando hit the two free throws. This was a great basketball game from a guy who's been a damn good player. And it'll be a shame if they don't find a way to get his jersey up there because oh, he's, yeah, he's worthy right. of it. Right. And I'm telling you, we've kind of talked a little bit about this year about how well, Martin is not going to get his jersey up there, but RJ will be wasted player of the year. He'll get his jersey up there. And I said, you know, there's still MOP. And, and I said that because he's 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 the kind of guy that can step up on a stage. And he's the kind of guy that stands, that, that's very comfortable saying, okay, we're on this stage, we're in this game. Give me all the bullets you got, man. I can take it. He did that. 
this was an MOP type of performance tonight. It's the kind of thing that will translate moving ahead, as we'll talk about later on in this in this uh, podcast. So I love seeing him play like that. I like him a lot. I really admire a lot of the, you know, the way he goes about things. I admire tremendously the way he's handled this season. And he was comfortable taking a quote-unquote backseat role, but Hubert told him not to. Hubert said, you know what, we need you going 20 and 20. And mm -hmm. he told the team, we need Armando going 20. They haven't been as good the last three games as they had been previously. And they went ahead and lost at Georgia Tech. So they needed a little tree rattling. They got it with that player meeting, and they got it with Hubert talking to Armando and telling the team, that dude right there needs to get touches. Get his butt touches. And uh, he probably said something like, you know, what the fart are you doing not passing on the ball as much as he, as yeah, he yeah. should? So that was the game plan. The number one part of Carolina's offensive game plan was to get him involved. They got him involved right away, and he was active all night, and he was a great player. Not a very good player. He was a great player tonight on the biggest stage they played on this season. I, I tweeted it out in the second. I just stay on this for a second. I tweeted out in the second half that – when he, and this is a point where you, you, you could, he was having a big game already. I know he ended up scoring more points and grabbing a couple more rebounds, but I tweeted out that this is a fifth year player playing in a Carolina Duke game. He, he, it's a guy that is playing like he's been here before, essentially. And that was the biggest thing for me is when you think of the, the games that the amount of, not only the amount of times, you know, Armando has played against Duke, but the stages he's played against Duke and won games on. That was the big thing for me because early on, it kind of just felt like, like you said, the game plan was to get Armando, but from his perspective, it was like, guys, give me the ball. Like, Filipowski can't guard me tonight. And he continued to take advantage of that. So I, I think you mentioned how the game plan was towards him too, but you can have a game plan to go to Armando and he doesn't play well. Tonight, the game plan was to go to him and he's yeah. absolutely fantastic. So he's and, and he's comfortable on the stage, you know what I mean? Look, he's been playing better. He's people complain about well, he doesn't flush in the lane. Well, why are you surprised? Why are you complaining about that now? Has he ever been that guy? Well, well, he loses the ball sometimes. He gets a shot blocked, and oh, he's always been that guy. That's who he is. So, if you're complaining about who he is and who he's been, and you're okay a year ago, it's still that guy. The difference is he just hasn't been getting as many touches, and he's done an outstanding job at being a great screener. They have a screen assist statistic that they keep, and his numbers are off the charts. He had five assists tonight when he passed the ball. I'd be willing to bet you had another dozen screen assists as well, minimum. Yeah, and mm -hmm. he just got the ball more and went up, and the re and, and also the other. Criticism well, he's not rebounding as much. Well, that kind of goes with the shot opportunities. No, mm -hmm. I, nobody has played here other than Antoine Jamison and maybe Tyler Hansbro that was better at rebounding their own misses in the league than, than Armando. And if he's not, if he's attempting four shots, well, there aren't a whole lot of rebound his own miss opportunities. So the number, all exactly. those two numbers were down because of that. Tonight they were up. He got the shots, he got the looks, he converted, he drew a lot of fouls, he gave the team tremendous mojo, and it was very fitting that he got that dunk there at the end. Kind of similar, yeah. same angle as the one he had in, at Cameron a couple of years ago when Caleb Love threw the pass and had the tongue wagging. So no tongue wagging today, but Armando <laughs> more than came through and did, our, did the good Armando things tonight. People need to shut up about getting on his butt. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I couldn't. I couldn't agree more with you. L let's talk about. I just mentioned his name, Tyler Andrew. <laughs> you got Tyler Andrew sitting on. I did. I was just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, little guest appearance from little guest appearance from Tyler Andrew. Right and, well. <laughs> and if he doesn't get shots, he can't. He can't grab his own misses, right? Yeah, that's right. There you go. See, that's from Tyler Hansbury. He knows. <laughs> he knows a hell of a lot more than I do. And yeah, that's what you get on anyway. three things, man. You get, you get guest appearance from, from Carolina legends like that. That's what you get here on tarlistrian.com. <laughs> but <laughs> AJ, keeping it moving, it, this kind of builds on the big games that Armando had. And obviously Harrison Ingram had too, because I thought he was absolutely fantastic tonight. Yeah. We'll talk about him in a second. But you can tell early on, I remember turning to you on press row up there early on in the game, when our, maybe midway, three-fourths the way through the first half. I know I think RJ Davis would be had like four points at that point, if that. I remember turning to you, and I'm like, what are you seeing – from Duke tonight that is disrupting RJ. And I think you immediately said, you know, they're just face guarding more. They're just they're up in his face a lot more than he's yeah. than he's gotten this season. And then we talked to RJ after the game and he said the exact same thing. So it, it was very evident early on in the game. And I think you have to give Duke credit for this because it did work in the first half in particular. It, it, it didn't work overall because of how good Armando Baycott and Harrison Ingram were in particular. But 
they quite the game plan obviously from duke was to hey we're not gonna let this rj davis guy beat us tonight we might let somebody else beat us but he's not gonna be the guy that drops 30 plus on us tonight and leads him to victory but Armando Baycott, Harrison Ingram, other players, you throw Cormac Ryan in there as well. Seth Trimble pitching in 10 points. I know RJ ultimately finished with 17. A lot of those came in the second half down the stretch. But again, it, yeah. Other, yeah, exactly. Other players stepped up when it was very evident that Duke's game plan was to quiet yeah. RJ tonight. And you have to give him credit because, AJ, we, last thing I'll say on this, we had a podcast midweek, I believe it was on Wednesday, and one of the big topics we talked about was – is Carolina relying a little bit too much on RJ? He's having to kind of, you know, it's like you look at the scoring, uh, the box scores from the last few games, and it's like, well, if RJ's not giving you like 25 plus, they're not getting a lot from anybody else. That wasn't the case tonight. Baycott and Ingram combined for what, 46 points tonight of Carolina's 93. They were absolutely fantastic, yeah. particularly in that first half to kind of give Carolina that big lead. So, but it's just an interesting game plan for Duke. Didn't end up working in the long run, but it, it worked a little bit in the first half, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I, they hadn't quite become re- reliant on him, too reliant on him yet, but but there was the concern, and you could raise the question that maybe they were trending in that direction. Yeah, second half trending, of the Georgia yeah. Tech, second half of the Georgia Tech game, I think they just there were way too many sets to try to get him shots. So Duke had a great, great game plan. RJ told me that he's never been face guarded that far from the basketball floor since high school. It happened in high school, and there were a couple times, especially when Roach was on him, if RJ had the ball in the wing, Filipowski came out. And Filipowski would kind of shadow him, shade him some, and and give him no room. To, the only thing he could do is get rid of the ball. So what Duke did work is RJ didn't go off. But the thing about it is, is that this team needed a game. They needed to, to win this game and do it without RJ going for 30-35. And I say that because he scored two of their first three baskets. And then the next 19 field goals by Carolina were by guys other than RJ. And that's huge because you know that stat that I kept from the Georgia Tech game, Jacob. The last 27 minutes of that game in Atlanta, Cadeau, Ryan, Baycott, and Ingram combined to make three shots, three for 28. So tonight, when RJ's taken out, and Duke's looking at that film and saying, you know what, we take that guy out, they can't beat us. But you know what, yeah. the other guys stepped up. They, they kind of found some stuff that had been missing. Harrison had not, had not had a 20-point game since UConn. In fact, he was stuck at 10 or 11 for a long time and had 13, I think, at FSU. So, And, and, and RJ was the only double-figure scorer in Atlanta. So Harrison kind of channeled that earlier season self. Armando channeled that earlier season self. And Seth Trimble, who had a really good November and December, and told and admitted to me tonight they kind of had some struggles. He didn't know why he wasn't converting on on the break. He would get to the rim and some stuff, and he would miss that stuff. And he said tonight, you know, he kind of felt like he'd gotten back the way he was. He also had better position on some of those drives tonight too, using the body to shield guys. He's learning how to do that still. Still a young player. So, so you had the old, you had uh, Trimble from earlier, you had Ingram from earlier, you had Baycott from earlier, and then off the bench, you know, uh, Jalen Washington gave him a bucket off the bench. He only played a couple of minutes, but, you know, his points per minutes is, is high and he showed no fear. So it, this wasn't a team that approached the game like we needed RJ to beat, to beat Duke. They weren't saying that. There was nothing about their performance tonight at all that said, look, we're going to do whatever we got to do. Whoever's going to score got, needs to score, we'll score and we'll get this thing done. And that's what they did. And they showed a, a level tonight. And we're going to talk about this in a second that they haven't shown this year. And that's it. Because if they needed RJ to put up 30 shots tonight, try to have a chance to win, they would have lost the game. And they're going to need a reliable second and third score moving forward. Guys that can have flare-ups. They need other dudes to lead them in scoring. I've been telling you that for two and a half, three weeks. And we've only lightly discussed it on some of these shows. And I think I put something in in a note the other day about it. But uh, that's why this was so huge. So I think the best case scenario for this team tonight was to win the game the way they did, especially with RJ largely being ineffective in the scoring column until well into the second half. That three he hit at the top of the key was with about seven minutes left, and that put him in double figures. And then he hit free throws the rest of the way. So that, that's that's what championship teams do. And a yeah. team that is re- too reliant on RJ wouldn't have done that. They would have been swallowed whole by trying to get him the ball. And they were lost. This team didn't do that. They just played, oh, they're taking RJ up. That's cool. 
Harrison, go nuts. Four phase. Take, take over no. down low. Seth, get the ball in transition. Trimble had a basket right after a Duke basket at fast break. It's classic Carolina basketball. Mm -hmm. it, it looked a little bit like a like high loss and kind of speed. You know what's what yeah. I'm talking about? Left-handed layup. Yeah, I know exactly which way you're talking he about. There and, he, and he used it, the right side of his body to shield the defender. It was beautiful. I mean, it was mm -hmm. it's picture perfect. So, mm -hmm. what, a, what a phenomenal way for this team to remind the world that Georgia Tech was just stuff, something that happened sometimes. You know, I was surprised yeah. that a lot of people thought that there was a little bit more to it than that. They just didn't shoot well, didn't play well. They lost a the game. So, they showed that happens, tonight. Man. They they are they are absolutely heading in the right direction, no doubt about it. Yeah, I mean it ha it happens at ACC play, man. I mean, good lord, I mean, you're looking at the banners up there. I mean, did none of those none of those teams two on five, two on nine, two on seventeen, particularly they didn't get undefeated in ACC play. I mean, they they lost games in ACC play. They weren't supposed to lose. So yeah. again, oh nine was zero and two. Oh nine was zero and two in ACC. People for, people forget about that. People are in panic mode up in, in this in this town, but yeah, it, it happens. It, it happens. So moving on, last thing, what this means. Quick turnaround for the Tar Heels. It was funny. He, I don't know if you caught it, but he would ask after his press conference. I think he turned to Steve or something. He's like, when do we play again? <laughs> ask him when the next game was. It was pretty funny. I think someone told him it was it was Clemson on Tuesday night. So it's a, it's a relatively quick turnaround for North Carolina. Obviously, you know, Clemson coming here is going to be a tough matchup, particularly a couple of days after this Duke game that's obviously very emotional. So interesting to see how the, the Tar Heels bounce back for that. But you talked about Armando Bay kind of second ago, AJ, saying after the game that, you know, quote unquote, they took it to another level today. You, you've already discussed that a little bit. I think that's what this game means, AJ. And again, it's one thing for Armando to say that after a game, but it's one thing for Armando to say that after a game when you can clearly watch the tape over again and be like, yeah, they, like we've talked about, they really did take it to another level tonight from getting more scoring from Ingram. It was trem uh, tremendous, double double for him. Armando stepping up and being big. RJ ultimately kind of giving you 17 and five like he he kind of typically does and like you said other guys stepping up so again for me it's going to be really interesting how tuesday night works out because i do think that's going to be a tough matchup but if, if carolina continues to play like they did tonight and get more production from rj because i think he can take it to another level too because i don't think teams are yeah. going to be able to stop him like duke was able to do tonight for at least in the first half man this carolina team's got a really really high ceiling well i i turn to you Midway through the second half, was it? And I said something to you I hadn't said. I hadn't thought for the first time this year that this looked like a net cutting team. Like yeah. they gave me the vibe that 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 the qualities are there to cut down the nets. They still got a long way to go. But the way they responded, the way they stepped up, the, the Harrison Ingram embracing the stage. Ingram, or, or how about Ryan? Right after he had the airballed three, he gets the same spot in the, in the right corner. God, 35 game seconds later, if even that, and he buries it. Swish. Uh, the maturity of this team, the ability of this team to just block out sequences that don't go well and continue to march forward and not let a, a bad play or a bad sequence stick with them is one of their great attributes. And we see that we've seen that a lot all year long tonight. There were a couple of times because Duke was pretty good offensively. People are going to think that Duke didn't play well, but they had three guys in the twenties. They got some really, really good guards. And shot I shot fifty percent for the game. I mean, they, yeah, they, 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 they were good offense. I don't know what the final rebounding was, but Duke was ahead in the rebounding edge most of the game too. So uh, 30, Duke 35, of, 34 North Carolina. So they North Carolina okay. just edged well, them thirty five, thirty four. You know, Duke is trending the right way too. We talked about that in the podcast mm -hmm. that we did the other day, the, the the daily drop. And so I think that Carolina got them with Duke play with a lot of confidence and doing a lot of good things. So Carolina could never relax in this game because Duke was going to score. They were going to yeah. get to the basket. They were going to score. By the way, I don't know what Duke was from the perimeter, but I, I, I didn't think Duke could win this game without hitting a ton of threes. I thought Carolina's game plan, it, it frustrates people sometimes when guys get in the lane, but those layups don't mm. count as much as threes. And Duke wasn't going to come out of here with a win without hitting a ton of threes. Yeah. And Five for 19. Five for 19 tonight. So, so this club showed that level. They, they went up another, they need to go up a couple more. But on February, what, February 3rd? That's a pretty high level. They've already been very good in a lot of areas, and they continue to be very good in those areas. And sometimes they're going to play a really good team that's going to get fast break points on them and blow up that stat that I've been 
keeping it, tracking every game, and they're going to get second chance points. And they're going to shoot well from the perimeter, stuff like that. Although Duke didn't really shoot well from the perimeter night, but uh, a, a champion response, a champion like RJ Davis gets clotheslined and gets a, I still don't know the uh, fascinating flagrant one that was called on him. And then, and then when Roach fouled him, it looked like Roach ran into him, almost butted heads with him on that one. We were talking to RJ, you and I were talking to RJ after the game and he took his ice pack off long enough. You get a photo. That's the photo we're using for our player interviews on the front yeah. page. And I asked him if he felt like he'd been in a ring with, with Tyson and he started laughing because he got banged up a lot, but he, Roy's not here coaching, but I would love if if you would let Roy come in and just say about R.J. Davis, he's one tough little nut because he yeah, is. <laughs> he's a tough little nut, and and he kept plugging away, and they they showed that fiber, man. They showed that fiber mm-hmm. on a very high level. They showed it mm-hmm. on a very high level. I've covered a lot of championship teams before, and today they kind of took a step into that that next room. And that room is, okay, can you become a champion? You're, you have championship qualities. Now can you be that team? So they stepped in that room today. And how they respond against Clemson, which will come in as a desperate club. I'm stunned that Clemson is struggling as much as it is. They were it's a very good team earlier in the year. Now they're – I mean, they need to get a win. They need to steal one on the road because they're in trouble. And Brad's in trouble as well. So they're going to be a desperate team coming in. Miami needs to get big wins. They need a Q1 win. So they're going to go down there Saturday, and they're going to take the best punch Miami has. And then they'll go up to Syracuse. And Syracuse got blown out today. They'd like to think that they can be in the conversation, but they won't if they don't beat the Tar Heels at home. So these next three games are going to be huge tests for this team as far as playing desperate clubs. Clubs are going to leave everything on the floor, and they're going to challenge the Tar Heels to do the same. And if they do, they'll win these three games. So yeah. I think Miami's no, going to be tough. But we'll talk about yeah, that. Yeah, it's always, it's always tough at Miami. It seems like Carolina, it's one of those places Carolina always struggles a little bit. Tallahassee, the same. Charlottesville, the same. It's it's, it's never easy to go there and, and get a win. So, But, again, we'll see what happens on, on Tuesday night. Quick turnaround. And Carolina can, if Carolina can put another performance like they had tonight against Clemson, then, uh, you know, I think Carolina fans are to uh, keep loving where this team's at right now. And they should because it was, it was a really good performance from, from them. 93-84 win over Duke on this very court right in front of us right here, AJ. We can go ahead and get out of here. We got I think we're going to do a little quick drop, too. Is that the, we still we're going to do the quick little daily drop after that? Yeah, let's do a little quick drop. We'll do a drop for Monday. On Monday. It's kind of tough. When, when they play Saturday and then Tuesday, yeah. it's just kind of tough to get a drop in for Monday yeah. with all the other stuff we have to do. Because right now it's 10-31. Yeah, I'll yep. be here till I'll be here till two thirty, three o'clock probably. And you know it's gonna be later. It could be worse. It could be a nine o'clock, a eight o'clock tip or nine o'clock tip. So we'll count our blessings in that respect. So. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta count them when you can, man. But I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. Make sure you keep it locked to TarlyIllustrated.com for all your coverage from tonight's win, and obviously for all your coverage leading up to Clemson and uh, for the Clemson game on Tuesday night in the Smith Center. Make sure you like. I mean, come on, guys. Like the video. I mean, everybody, if you're watching this, if you're a Carolina fan, oh, watch this. I'm assuming you're, you're feeling pretty good right now. If so. you're watching it, I totally forgot. If you're watching this before midnight, we have a promo going on. It ends at midnight. You get 30 days free yeah. on the site. And yeah, the I'm going to try to get this up before midnight. The, That's my goal. I'm gonna get the, promo code is, the promo code is Beat Duke. So, Not free. This is the best time of year to get 30 free days of our site. I completely forgot. I wasn't even texting it out, tweeting it out during the game like a fool. I should have been, but I wasn't. So <laughs> hey, It happens, man. Bigger fish and fry. So, again, we'll go ahead and get out of here. Keep it locked. Link link in the description below. Charlie Shane. Do it right like now, the video. Yeah. Send a tweet out. And, again, if you enjoyed the win tonight, like the video, man. Let's see how many we can get. I want at least 250 likes on this video, and I think we can easily get that. So, go ahead and hit that like button below. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell, too. See you all next time. Thanks.